Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Craven the Hunter or the Shocker, and like and subscribe for more revenge next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Helena Bertinelli, also known as the Crossbow Killer. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The Huntress. Freaking fabulous, if you ask me. We use ham crossbows as substitutes a lot for guns here at Two Lock LLC, but today we have an honest-to-goodness real crossbow user. She also uses guns sometimes. Shoot. A really great hunter would go after something that could hunt him back. Oh. Like a man. Oh, hell yeah, dude. A man? Don't even joke about hunting no man. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be really mad at a cobalt soul. I'm talking about cross at a bow. Next, we need to go hunting for the most dangerous game, Italians. Finally, the other part of the hand crossbow is hands, so we'll make sure that we can use our hands against other hands in hand-to-hand -hand combat. For stats, we'll be using the standard point right from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity will be number one. That's how you shoot good and also how you dodge people's attacks without wearing plate mail. Wisdom after that, hunting down human monsters requires good perception. Intelligence next, investigation will help you track down the mob. Constitution at 12, the path to vengeance is a lonely one fraught with trials, like getting punched a lot. Strength is a bit low. You're a strong woman, but you're on a team with a woman like Diana Prince, so relatively speaking, you're not very strong. We're gonna dump charisma though. You're scary, but you're not good at talking to people. Kind of missed out on the social aspect of high school at after your parents were murdered and you devoted your life to their vengeance. Helena starts the Birds of Prey, but she's a human, not a bird, it's confusing, but human is straightforward, letting you grab a feat, like Crossbow Expert, to fire multiple times in a round with a crossbow without worrying about the loading property. You can shoot creatures within five feet of you without disadvantage, and you can shoot as a bonus action with a hand crossbow after you've attacked with your action. That's kind of like extra attack at level one, which is very, very nice. Bump your dexterity and your wisdom with your two free points, take acrobatics for your skill of choice, and sleight of hand and intimidation from your background, I guess. I don't care about backgrounds. Haunted one feels appropriate, but you can move skills around as much as you'd like, and I basically want every skill from the rogue list. So, starting as a rogue seems like a good idea, giving you four skills from the rogue list, like athletics, investigation, insight, and stealth, then push two of those even higher, with expertise. Balance you double your proficiency bonus with two skills. We'll start with insight and stealth, since those will be the most helpful to land sneak attacks. A sneak attack lets you add a d6 of extra damage to an attack once per turn, as long as you have advantage on the attack, or another bird within five feet of the target. All the girls are pretty good at the hand-to-hand -hand stuff, so there should be someone up close. Speaking of hand-to-hand, -hand, let's get that nice and early by dipping to Monk, letting you grab martial arts to make unarmed attacks with your dexterity modifier. They deal 1d4 damage, and you can make one as a bonus action after you attack with your action using an unarmed strike or a Monk weapon. A Monk weapon gets to use your dexterity and only has to be a simple melee weapon without the heavy or two-handed property. Quarterstaff is a solid option, though it's important to know just because it fits the definition of finesse, it does not make a quarterstaff finesse. You cannot use it for sneak attack. You'll have to use a dagger. You also can't use your martial arts while wearing armor, so it's a good thing you get unarmored defense, being your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. Right now that's basically the same as studded leather, but it'll get better in a second, like second level of monk, because you get unarmored movement, making you faster when you're not wearing armor to get more movement speed out of your purple boots. You also get dedicated weapon, letting you choose a weapon you're proficient with that doesn't have the heavy or special property. Hand crossbow would fit, and you can turn it into a monk weapon. That means that you can now shoot someone and kick someone in the same turn, or just shoot someone twice with crossbow expert anyway, since shooting people is good. But you also get key points to do cool bird stuff, like Step of the Wind letting you dash or disengage as a bonus action with double jump distance to get where you need to go. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, but you'd rather be a little defensive with your bonus action. Doesn't sound like you though, so I'd use Flurry of Blows to make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action, which would actually be more damage than another crossbow shot. Hooray! Third level monks can choose a monastic tradition, and usually we go Kensei for better melee weapons, but they're also great archers. Pick a melee and a ranged weapon to become Kensei weapons. I think a dagger and your hand crossbow would be the best options. With a melee weapon, you can make an agile parry, adding two to your AC after you make an unarmed attack as part of your action, as long as you can hold the melee Kensei weapon in your hand. That means even if someone gets up close, you'll be able to defend yourself. With your ranged weapons, you can make a Kensei shot, spending a bonus action to add a d4 to the damage of your ranged attacks with Kensei weapons, but that's not as good as just shooting again. Crossbow expert's really good. You also get Way of the Brush for calligraphy proficiency, which should raise you to the god tier level of other DC characters like Darkseid or Jimmy Olsen. Fourth level monks get an ability score improvement. We'll start with dexterity since it helps with all of your attacks and you're pretty into attacking. You also get slow fall and you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction, either gliding with your cape or catching yourself with a grappling hook, however you want to flavor it. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one or up to three with a bonus action or four with a flurry of blows. Those unarmed attacks will also be hitting a bit harder since your monk die bumps up to a d6. You even get stunning strike, letting you spend a key point when you make a melee weapon 
weapon attack, forcing a constitution save or throw on a creature you hit. If they fail, they're stunned until the end of your next turn, which is a great way to guarantee sneak attacks or disengage for free. There still isn't enough multi-class in here for me though, so let's jump over to Ranger to give you another skill from the Ranger list like Perception and Canny for expertise in another skill like Intimidation to make up for your low charisma. You also get a type of favored enemy, a type of creature you'll have advantage to track. Humanoids are a great option if you want to hunt down people. People are humanoids. Things really get started at the second level of Ranger though with a fighting style like Archery to add two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons, making you more accurate with your shots. You can also learn Ranger spells like Hunter's Mark, letting you pick a creature you really want to die, and add an extra d6 of damage to your attacks against them. With three attacks per round, that's 3d6 every round for up to an hour depending on your concentration nor if you kill them. But then you can transfer it to another creature with a bonus action if you want. For a smoke bomb, Fog Cloud creates a 20 foot radius of heavily obscuring fog, helping you hide or get away unscathed. Third level Rangers get to choose a Ranger Conclave. Gloom Stalkers are edgy murder experts, with Umbral Sight giving you 60 feet of dark vision and making you invisible to creatures relying on dark vision to see you. You're also a Dread Ambusher, letting you add your Wisdom modifier to your initiative, make an additional attack in the first round of combat, and deal an extra d8 of damage with that attack. The other way to become an Ambusher would be Assassin Roguish Archetype, but that's charisma focused and Huntress doesn't really disguise herself. She sort of just shows up and starts shooting. It's rad. Four level Rangers get another ability score improvement, letting you cap off your dexterity modifier for the deadliest shots you can make until we get another feat later. I'm guessing you know which one. But for more damage faster, we're going to jump back to Rogue, giving you cunning action to dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. No key points required. While Huntress is okay up close, ranged attacks definitely work better with a range, so scoot away, then shoot away. Third level Rogues can choose a roguish archetype, and if we're not going Assassin, that might make you feel a little inquisitive. And if you're inquisitive, why not go for the inquisitive archetype? That'll give you an eye for detail, letting you make a perception check or investigation check as a bonus action, and an ear for deceit, meaning the lowest you can roll on an insight check to determine a lie is an 8, followed by your massive modifier. That should make interrogations a little less bloody, but only if you want them to be. The biggest benefit is insightful fighting, letting you make an insight check against enemies' deception checks. If you win, you can use sneak attack against them for a minute, even if you don't have advantage on the roll or an ally within 5 feet. Sometimes, you have to have a solo knight. It helps to have 2d6 sneak attack damage. If you can't make that work with insightful fighting, use steady aim, giving you advantage on a weapon attack as a bonus action after not moving on the turn. It's a decent backup. Four level rogues get an ability score improvement or feat, and sharpshooter will drastically increase your damage output, with the ability to take a negative 5 penalty to your attack rolls to add 10 to the damage of your attacks. You can also fire at max range without disadvantage and ignore all but full cover when you're shooting. I know that we use this on like every archer, but it's really good, especially with crossbow expert for another attack every round. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you have the damage of an incoming attack as long as you can see the source, making you deceptively bulky, even though you have a d8 hit die for most of your levels. Your sneak attack also bumps up to 3d6 here. Sixth level rogues get expertise for two more skills, go for acrobatics to break out of grapples and perception to stop anyone from getting the drop on you. You're the huntress, not the hunted. Seventh level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage from failed dexterity saves and no damage from successful ones. Now you can dive out of the way of explosions. There's a lot of explosions in Gotham, probably because there aren't that many superpowers. Bombs are a superpower for the common man. And 4d6 sneak attack damage is a superpower for an uncommonly accurate woman. Eighth level rogues get another ability score improvement. Round up your intelligence and wisdom because you get no benefits from having odd numbers. And because they'll help you track down the baddies to get your vengeance. Ninth level inquisitors get steady eye, giving them advantage on perception and investigation checks when they move less than half their speed on their turn. Your speed is increased as a monk, but that still doesn't make this all that good. By the time initiative starts, you're probably shooting things anyway, and your passive perception is really high. No one's going to be able to hide from you, but you also get 5d6 sneak attack damage. That's nice. Tenth level rogues get our last ability score improvement. Bump up your wisdom to set your AC to 19 or 21 with an agile parry. You might not look like a tank, and you're not, but you're much harder to take out than most archers. Our capstone is the 11th level rogue for reliable talent, meaning the lowest you can roll on a skill you're proficient with is a 10, followed by your modifiers. You have an extra skill and an extra set of expertise from the ranger dip, but we can talk about that in a bit. Right now, just 66 sneak attack damage. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can pump out the damage in the first round with four shots, all getting an extra d6 from Hunter's Mark if you set that up before initiative. One, getting an extra d8 from Gloom Stalker, and an extra 6d6 from Sneak Attack, and a plus 15 modifier on each attack. Four, 14d6 plus 1d8 plus 60, or around 106 with median rolls. Following rounds, you're dealing 2d6 plus 15 with each shot and three shots per round, which will also make your crossbow consistently killer. Finally, you're fast with extra movement speed and free disengagement to put you at a safer distance to shoot people. For weaknesses, you have no magical damage. You could have gotten that with one more level of Gloomstalker or one more level of Monk, but I deliberately didn't do that because Huntress doesn't have any magic. Also, your DM's gonna give you a magical weapon. Your charisma skill is also intimidation, which is kind of mean, so convincing someone to do something 
anything without pointing a weapon at them may prove difficult. Finally, you've got a limited number of resources, with precious few spell slots and key points that you're going to burn through pretty quickly. But you don't really need those to shoot stuff sharply. This is a straightforward crossbow murder woman, but its focus makes it really effective. Just watch out for more complicated conspiracies. They could have you questioning who your friends are. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're making two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Craven the Hunter or the Shocker, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.